everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, I am going to be doing another of these uh, funnel flower straight pours using this nifty little contraption uh, that I got from the paint pour store. There is a link in the description box uh, for a coupon code. If you wanna grab one of these little contraptions, uh, they have all kinds of really cool um, devices for uh, acrylic pouring, split cups, and um, lots of these little flower making uh, doohickeys, which are genius. Uh, really loved the way the last piece turned out. So uh, the last one I did with metallics, this one I'm going to use uh, the satin enamels, going for that like cloud pour effect, but you can see I'm using kind of this periwinkle family of colors. Um, so basically it's a monochromatic straight pour using one of these. And uh, hopefully it creates a flower-like effect and it will look super groovy. So let's, let's get this party started. Um, the colors that I'm using. I have dioxazine purple by Liquitex Basics, Phthalo Blue by Liquitex Basics, and Ultramarine Blue by Artist Loft. I have uh, Artist Loft, uh, the soft body acrylic uh, in white, and the DecoArt Americana Decor satin enamels in pure white. What I have done. There is no white in this cup, in this background slash base coat color. To these cups, um, so what I do is 50% satin enamel and then 50% some other paint. It doesn't matter which paints, just 50% some other paint. So this one, has the satin enamels and a good bit of the uh, Artist Loft white. And I just drizzled a little bit of that color into this cup, gave me exactly what I needed. And then it's basically the same, uh, just with less of the Artist Loft white in each. So there's the same amount of satin enamels in each cup and then I just vary the amount of each color that uh, goes with it. So what I do when I'm doing a monochromatic pour, what I find to be easiest, especially if I'm doing a custom color, I will mix this custom color first. And that's what I paint my sides with. And then I will use that color to tint these cups. So it's all the same color. And then I will add my flow trawl. And uh, so it's one part paint to two parts flow trawl. So for instance, if I'm using a tablespoon of the satin enamels, then I need my other paints to equal a tablespoon. So that's two tablespoons of paint to which I would add four tablespoons of pouring medium. In this case, uh, well, flow trawl. Not technically a pouring medium, but that's what we're using it for. So one part paint to two parts flow trawl. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% flow trawl until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two. On my consistency scale, it does make a mound, but it disappears very quickly it's making a nice thin stream off of my stick like a pencil lead. It is not thin and then thick and then thin. That just means that your paints are not fully mixed and you need to keep on mixing. It should be a very smooth stream off of your stick. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. The exact paint brands, the colors, the consistency, of course, the technique, 
uh, all of the stuff that I can't fit on a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for this particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluga.net and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some of this background paint into my cup to make sure that I have enough to do my pour. And then I will lay down my base coat, reserving a bit of paint in the cup to uh, put at the end of my pouring cup, but also sometimes I need it to uh, help get it to the edges. Those corners can set up. So I like to have a little bit extra. These colors together are absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a, the background anyway is just like this indigo type color. Beautiful, beautiful. And then when you start mixing it with the white, then you kind of get that periwinkle color going. So you'll notice that I have covered my edges already. I do that because the way that I mix for a straight pour to get these boulder cells, it's pretty thin, especially when I'm using Floetrol. Um, Floetrol can have a tendency to not um, give the best coverage on the sides. So I like to cover them first just to be sure that my sides are fully covered, but even though I have painted the sides already, I still have to apply the base coat to it. The base coat is what goes on the canvas. The background color is what goes in the cup. I just happen to use the same color for both. Um, and the reason I call the background color the background color is because that is the color that does not sell. All the cells kind of pop up and push this paint to, to the background. That's, that's my thinking on that terminology. And the reason I lay down a base coat is so that my paints will slide around evenly. something has to stick to the canvas first. And if it is not your base coat, it is going to be your poured paints. And then what happens is the paints that wind up on the outer edge of your puddle will get covered by the paint in the center that is rolling over top of it. Okay, before I put my the rest of my paint in the cup, I'm going to put this on my canvas. This took me a minute last time. And wow, Satch Satchmo was really wound up. Um, it, it took me a minute last time and I want to make sure that I get it done as quickly as possible because once I put those paints in the cup, they start to sell and the cell makers start coming to the top. Uh, so, if I were working on the Rayleigh Taylor instability, I would want that cup to sit and allow those paints to do their thing. But I am working on the hydrophobic effect, which is a different uh, fluid dynamic. The Rayleigh Taylor instability, uh, I did do a video on this whole thing, uh, the science between uh, like, the difference between the Rayleigh Taylor instability and the hydrophobic effect and when to use which. So I will get this centered and then I will put my paint in the cup.
Okay, I've got my little doohickey, my little flower funnel as centered as I think I'm probably going to get it. I'm going to put my paint in the cup. I'm going to go, I want, what do I want? So I want my lightest color to come out last. Generally, that would mean that you would put the lightest color in first. But the way that these paints seem to behave, um, I will pour it from up high and some of that lightest color will sink to the bottom and that ends up in the center uh, because it's the last thing to come out of the cup. So I will be pouring from up high starting with the darkest color, allowing it to sink and churn. That is what gets the blending of those cells and gives that awesome 3D boulder effect. Always check your consistency. The sauce may thicken upon standing, so you wanna make sure Everything is the same consistency before you put it in your cup. If you have different consistencies, they will move at different rates. And so if you find yourself having some paints that are very squiggly and some that are not, the squiggly paints are probably thinner than the other paints. If it is uniformly squiggly, that could be because your canvas was dry, you are tilting too fast, or um wait there was something else i got distracted because i started thinking about something else <laughs> or um you are not bringing your paints back to center um as you are tilting you have to bring your paint back to center when you are changing directions that will help to prevent that um i'm not exactly sure how centered this actually is. I did my best. I see a cat hair. Where'd you go? Where did you go? There it is. Remove any schmutz as soon as you see it. It will cause problems later. Okay. So I'm going to spin this as I'm pouring because I want these colors to come out evenly. If I don't, then one side kind of has a certain look and then the other side looks different. Um, if you see my regular straight pours where I'm not spinning, I wind up with boulder cells here and pop-up cells here. I want it to be uniform. So I will be spinning this clockwise. And you have to kind of do it slowly because it does need time to flow out of the bottom. So be prepared to exhibit some serious patience. Now, this is more paint than I would typically need for a canvas this size. My theory behind that is um, because I am spinning it, I kind of need to measure from corner to corner and think of it as a round because I am spinning it. I'm not tilting it. If I was tilting it, I could actually use a lot less paint. But with spinning it, I want it to be as uniform as possible. And so, oh, Sajmo, I had to take his bag away and he's sad. He was quite enjoying that bag, but it was making a quite the ruckus. He has the zoom, he's something fierce right now. 
<laughs> oh, this cat. It cracks me up. I'm just assuming he knows he's funny. I know he knows when he's rotten. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Saj Mo. Oh my god, I shouldn't say his name. Probably gonna jump up on the table or something. This definitely takes a while. You can't rush it. Well, I don't know if this is going to have the same effect as I got with the metallics, but there's definitely a flowery type shape happening. I do think that um, having it go through that hole is causing more blending than I would normally get in a straight pour. So I think the next experiment will be to layer the paints in the cup as opposed to um, allowing them to sink and churn the way that I do. Well, the sinking, yes, the churning, not so much. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Experiments are my favorite part of this art form. Do I get sick of straight pours? Um, yes and no. <laughs> I had someone ask me that recently. Um, I love the straight pours because they are, you know, it's like getting a Christmas gift. You never really know what you're going to get. You have an idea, but you're not quite sure. So there is always this element of surprise with them, which is what I really enjoy. Okay, the, the lightest color is coming out now. So that should give me a nice little thing happening in the center. Um, I do, however, miss doing brush work. Uh, I need to start doing that again. It did make me happy. It was very meditative. Uh, so I will probably be doing that again soon, possibly like embellishing pieces. Okay, I think we are finally at the end of that cup. Woo, that took a long time. Okay, now last time I did a little something in the center, but I don't know if I wanna do that. I wanna see what happens with that lightest color that came out. I can always adjust the center later. So let's very carefully lift this straight up. Okay, so I'm gonna just give the center a bit of a swirl, kind of make it look like a bud, a flower bud. That'll do. All right, so I need to pop these bubbles, allow this paint puddle to percolate. 
Now, as you see, when I pop these bubbles, I get lots of very tiny cells from the air bubbles coming up, bringing paint with it. And in many other uh, instances, that would not be desired, these little pin cells. But because these paints, the satin enamel paints have a hydrophobic effect when used with um, a paint that is more glossy. If I can find a way to get, there we go, hey. All right, um, when I use it with a paint that is more glossy, it pushes that glossy paint away, it creates the cells, so as these cells pop up, they will grow. Definitely not getting the same kind of petal formations as I got with the metallics, but it's still pretty cool. And as this sits, more cells will pop up. Even after I spin it and walk away, more cells will pop up. And I'm just going to slightly adjust to make sure my center is centered. Okay. Well, it's definitely getting a different effect from the satin enamels than I got from the metallics. We'll definitely try this again with um, different layering technique. Maybe try it with a split cup as well. But let's, let's give this a spin. because it's already starting to run off one side. So let's, and I don't have to spin it fast. It will get where it's going. Actually, what I am going to do is give these corners a wee bit of juice. The corners can set up pretty quickly. So I'm trying to find the ideal spot to sit this cup in case I need it. Now, so while I'm doing this part, let me tell you about my Patreon. Uh, so I do have a Patreon account now and there are, there's bonus content, there's stuff that you won't be seeing here on YouTube. Um, I am currently, we are working on the splash painting and there is a, a video up there teaching you how to sketch it out so that it is easier to translate to your canvas. Um, so there's going to be lots of content like that. And then when we do the splash painting, it will be real time. Follow along with me. We also have Zooms, uh, which are my favorite part, I think, because I really enjoy uh, getting to know everybody, getting to see everybody's faces, um, helping folks to kind of overcome their own hurdles, the biggest barriers we will ever encounter in our lives come from our own mind. So I am trying to help people through that. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there when I first started playing music so, so long ago, or a long time ago. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm approaching my, getting close to my third decade of uh, 
being in the music field. Um, I went through a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of I can't do this, and I had people who believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, and it made all of the difference in the world. Um, even still, you know, I still, I still have those, those moments and, um, even artistically. And there have been quite a few times where I've spoken to Lee Massey and he's kind of like helped me through those moments. And so thank you, Lee, for that. Um, you know, we all go through it and I, I kind of feel like having those Zoom sessions are as good for me as they are for everybody else because, you know, generally when I'm giving someone advice, I'm giving it to myself as well, <laughs> reminding myself these things. Um, but I have really enjoyed getting to know people, um, you know, on a, on a more personal level. Uh, getting to see someone smile and hear them laugh is a lot different than the smile emoji in LOL. So, um, you know, if you are at all inclined to uh, join us there, please do. We would love to have you. And we are going to be having some fun journeys. And they may seem daunting at first, but man... If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? So I'm just trying to add a little bit more juice to these corners because they're having a hard time. Stay. Stay. What? You stayed before. There you go. But yes, so patreon.com slash Gina DeLuca. And there's a private Facebook group. Uh, so if you post something in there, I will actually see it and be able to respond to it. Um, you know, I love Go Make Some Art, but it is so big now that I cannot possibly comment on everyone's uh, posts as much as I would like to. But it's also a small group, so it is a safe place if you have been hesitant to post your work, um, it's a great place to do it. We're all very friendly there. Um, you know, there is something to be said for, you know, making your way into a group, uh, you know, that uh, if you're if you're paying to get into the group, and that's you get more than just that, but. But the point being, you don't get any trolls because everyone has a vested interest in it being a pleasant space. So you wouldn't believe the amount of bots that I have to filter through at Go Make Some Art. It's really aggravating. Um, <laughs> hundreds. Hun I'll, I'll click it open and there will be hundreds of them. Uh, so that's why you have to answer those questions to get in. Anywho, do join us over there at Patreon if you feel so inclined. If you want to kind of get a little bit of hand-holding through this painting journey, we have the Zoom Q&As. Um, any questions that you have? And I can help diagnose your paintings if you're having problems. We can look at that. Okay, well, you know, it's it's not looking like the other one, but I love my little center here. I hope that doesn't change. Uh, I'm quite fond of that little center. I'm just going to... Center it a bit more. It's slightly off center. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let this sit and see what happens, and then I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. 
Okay, here it is. Uh, mixed feelings on this one. I did not quite get the flower effect that I got in the last piece, but I do love the center with the exception of that cell, which is really obnoxious. <laughs> but I mean, as far as like my little center, my little flower in the center, I love that. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's an experiment. It's what we do. So there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my Patreon. Join us there at the Zooms, uh, in the private Facebook group. Uh, we're having a good time over there. Going to be learning a lot. And um, also in the description box, you will find uh, the link to my affiliates, Deco Art and the Paint Pour Store, uh, where I got the little nifty contraption to make this pattern happen. Uh, if you use the uh, links in the description box, there are coupon codes for both Deco Art and the Paint Pour Store and lots of other uh, affiliates. So if you're doing online shopping, that uh, is the best way to help a sister out. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Also in uh, the description, oh, let me just remind you, if you are a subscribed, make sure you click that bell because if you are not receiving notifications, uh, that would be why they, they changed something and now you have to click the bell to receive notifications. Um, also in the description box, you will find the link to uh, the Fluid Art Experience. I will be teaching there in April. There will be a trailer at the end of this video to give you more information on that. Uh, you will also find the link to my website, GinaDeluga.net, where you can find my art and music for sale. And last but certainly not least, you will find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. And that is going to be it for me for today. I hope you all had a beautiful day. Stick around for that trailer. And uh, yeah, that's it. Go make some art.